Does fasting really bring me closer to God? Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Having a little headbangers brew this morning. And, uh, you know, this is our newest mug. It's the mug of the month, the poster of the month, the t-shirt of the month. And it's pretty cool. The tattoo that defines you. And it's writing the words on our hearts, carving the words, tattooing the words on our hearts. And that's what Proverbs 3.3 3 is all about. And, uh, of course... Our new slogan for the year is Sola Scriptura 2022. Back to the basics, back to the Bible. And we're going to have fun with both of these all month and with back to the Bible all year. And why is that important? That's what we're going to talk about. This is an interesting facet of our faith one that isn't talked about very much. And here's the question for today. Dear Pastor Bob, could you please talk about fasting and prayer? Do you fast regularly? What's the purpose of fasting? There are some pastors saying that fasting is showing God that you're serious about your prayer. It's like signing your prayer with seriousness. Some also say that it's good to fast and pray before a major decision. Does fasting really bring me closer to God? Great question. And one that I really don't talk about very much, and we should. So I have a lot of experience in this area. I've done, I don't even know how many long fasts, and a long fast is it's where you fast until you actually need to start eating again. I think the longest one that I ever went on was 36 days. Never done a 40-day fast, never got that far. And, um, you know, the hunger pangs go away after the first few days. And then you feel great for a while. And then when you start having that feeling again, it's kind of your stomach beginning to eat itself. <laughs> yeah. You need to start eating. And uh, so that's when you know that you're finished. But I've done many long fasts like that. And I also used to fast once a week. And I wish I still could. I, my my health doesn't allow me to do that anymore. And, uh, and so I can't. But I would recommend it. And not because I have to show God anything, honestly. Um, and I know that there are people that say that, and fasting is a way of being very serious, but God knows my heart. I don't always know his, and I think that's the key. Um, what's the purpose of fasting? We'll get to that in a minute. There are some pastors, he said, that, that say the fasting is showing God that you're serious about your prayer, and I guess that's true to a degree. But I think God knows our heart anyway. He knows when we're serious about prayer. And, uh, and but people say it's good to fast before a major decision. And I think that is probably true. Um, the moments of clarity during a fast are amazing. And I would say that every major decision that I have ever made, I've made with fasting prayer and fasting. And it's because of that that I'm able to see some things clearly. And I can't tell you why that happens. I don't know how your mind gets so crystal clear and how you get tuned in with God so well, but you just seem to hear him so well. You seem to tune in so well. And and uh, and you'd, it's, a, it's a way of really listening and communicating with him that we don't necessarily do or have the ability to do maybe. Otherwise, it's just a special time. And does fasting really bring me closer to God? It has for me. Closer to his will, 
closer to his his desires for me, uh, closer in my relationship with him? Yes, it has. Can I have a close relationship with God without fasting? Yes, you can. But it's been an interesting thing for me too. I want to go to some scripture today and let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. And it says that whenever you're fasting, it doesn't say if you fast. Every time the Bible talks about fasting, it says when you fast. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're fasting, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. And, you know, there's some people that go through fasting and they make sure everybody knows about it. And they 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 seem gloomy. They seem, you know, oh, I'm getting very weak and, you know, all this. And they said, and they put on a, a sad and dismal face like actors, discoloring their faces with ashes or dirt so that their fasting may be seen by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head as you normally would when you groom your hair and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by people, but by your father who is, who's, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So, Fasting is something that you do not for people to see, but it's something you do in your communication and in your relationship with God. There's an old book and, and I've forgotten the author. I think his last name was Wall, W-A-L-L. -L. It starts with a W, but it's called God's Chosen Fast. God's Chosen Fast. And uh, it's a book that I've used for decades uh, as my favorite book on fasting. I've read several. And I think it's not only a good guide into what fasting's all about, but it's like a how-to guide. How do you get started? What do you do? And how do you go about this? And God's Chosen Fast, if you're interested, would be a great book for you to read. Well, folks, it's always good spending this time with you. And it's always great to have you joining me. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget, we are blessed. <laughs> we are, aren't we? So go and be a blessing.